Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, uh, I'm going to be carrying out a replacement of the uh, the clutch on the uh, ZX 10R track bike. Um, as part of the process, I'm also going to be doing an oil and filter change. Um, but yeah, uh, follow me along and uh, let's see how we get on. First thing I need to do is uh, get the belly pan off so we've got full access to this area here. Right then, so we've got the uh, belly pan off. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to drop the oil up. Um, we're going to be putting fresh oil in uh, as part of this process. I'm going to also fit a brand new oil filter. So first thing I need to do is uh, is go underneath and crack off the sump plug. Okay then. So underneath the bike here is the sump plug. All we're going to do with our socket. Here's a cracker off. Oh, it's pretty tight. And once she's out, just allow the oil to drain into the drain pan, just like that. And there we are. Let's give that give that 10 minutes to drain out and then we can uh, look at getting the clutch cover off okay what we're going to do next is uh, whip the oil filter off what I've got to do that job is a chain style uh, strap wrench these are quite brutal so obviously you wouldn't use one of these to put something on but uh, it's perfectly good for getting a uh, oil filter off the bike so what we'll do just wind it up until it gets tight against the filter and then with a little bit of help she should come off and there we go There's the filter loose. Now we can spin it off, allow all the oil out of the filter to drain into the pan before I tip it all over my floor. Obviously, some of it is dripping on the exhaust, but uh, I'll give it a wipe down before we uh, put it all back together, and anything that is left will just burn off. Uh, when the uh, when the engine's running anyway, so it's nothing to uh, nothing to worry about. Spin the filter off. And there we go. Right then. Obviously the oil I'll uh, dispose of properly. Don't just pour it down the drain. But uh, yeah, that's that part done. What we'll do, uh, we'll leave that, uh, leave the filter until the end. Um, we'll get around to the other side and uh, get the clutch cover off. Okay then, what we're going to do? Get this clutch cover off. Obviously, we've got some GB Racing. Uh, there's some GB Racing uh, case protectors on here. So what we'll do? I'll pull out the bolts holding that in first and then we can get that out of the way. These are little, little bushes on them. What I've done, a bit of cardboard, I've made a uh, rough outline template of the bolt positions. Just stick them in there like so and then we'll know exactly 
what position they went in when, we, um, when they go back in because uh, not all the bolts are the same length some of them are slightly longer than others as you can see that one's considerably longer Next, I'll go around, crack off all the others. And this bolt and the next one have the, uh, the bracket for the clutch cable. So that's worth bearing in mind. And there we are, that's all the bolts. So I'll put that to one side, along with the uh, case protector. Oh. That should come off easier than that. Spin that round. We should be able to unclip the cover from the bike. There we go. Now, what I'll do before we go any further is pull the clutch rod. When I get it out, there we go. Out of the cover and then you'll be able to see what it was I was trying to achieve. Now, when you see this slot here, obviously when the clutch is actuated, that acts like a cam and pulls this in and out. What I was trying to do was turn it far enough to unhook it from there so that I could pull the cover off. Otherwise, the, uh, the cover won't come away because this is constantly being hooked behind the, uh, the clutch actuating rod. So what we'll do for the moment, is just stick this up out of the way somewhere. I'll try and get it out of the way. Make sure I don't lose the parts. In fact, let's put the washer and the spring to one side or they won't get lost. Okay, let's tuck that up out there, out of the way. Right, there we go. So obviously I need to have a little bit of a clean up and then what we'll do is we'll look at the clutch itself. Right then, okay, so this is the clutch pack assembly. Um, all we're doing is we're changing the friction discs. Uh, no, sorry, the friction plates, should I say. We're changing the friction plates. Now, um, replacing it with an EBC clutch and what I've been doing is 
soaking them in oil for the last couple of hours. Now this is clean oil, obviously this is um, having an oil change, so you soak the clutch plates in the same oil that you're gonna put into the bike, don't use a different oil. And um, as a general rule, what, um, what EBC recommend uh, with their clutches is to use a semi-synthetic oil, don't use a fully synthetic oil as, as it can affect the, uh, the frictional properties of the clutch. Um, so yeah, uh, let's uh, let's crack on. What we're going to do next is um, I'll put them to one side, leave them until I need them. What I'm going to do next is remove the six um, bolts from the uh, from the clutch springs, and uh, we should be able to take the uh, take the pressure plate off. Okay, let's uh, have a look at what we need. Let's put that there. What I'll do. Crack them all. Right, now, sometimes they may come out like that, or they may come out with uh, this portion behind it. It doesn't matter either way. See, that one's done the same. So that one, maybe they're all gonna come out like that. Actually, no, this one isn't. That one's come out the same. Come on. As you can see, that one came out like that, leaving that one in in position. Not drama, doesn't really matter. Now clutch pressure plate, bearing, just give it a give it a quick check, make sure it's nice and smooth. And it is. Um, quick once over to make sure everything's okay everything looks good it all looks all right can't see any damage no everything looks fantastic okay what we'll do next is we'll uh, we'll remove the clutch pressure uh, the clutch um, friction plates and the steels. Right then, what I did was I uh, removed the last stud and uh, kept them all together, so it's all that they're all the same. Uh, right, what we're going to do next is remove the uh, clutch plates. Now, what we'll notice on this um, on this particular bike is that the last clutch plate is offset from the others by one rotation by one. Uh, if you can see, instead of being like that in line with all the others, it's uh, slightly offset. The manual does tell you to do it like that. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the reasoning behind it, um, if I'm being brutally honest, but um, that is the way that Kawasaki fit them. So that one comes off, then we've got a steel, and we keep going like that until they're all out. What we can do actually grab the back one and push them like so and they'll all come out as a wanna making it nice and quick and I'm all down there Come on. 
Okay, and there we go. Right, what you'll notice was there was a, a sm small, some small rings. There's one there. So we have the last friction plate, then a steel, then that. A friction plate on top of that, and then another one. You'll notice that there's a bevel to it, and it's got to go in the right way around. So we'll sort that out when we come to it. And then the friction plate, uh, another steel on top of that. So what we need to do next is just inspect the clutch basket for any damage, make sure there's no excessive play in it. Uh, it all feels really nice. There's no, I can't see any. What we need to do is look down here. You can see, you can see marks where the clutch plates have uh, impacted. But what we need to do is just feel down here for any ridges, because uh, any ridges can prevent the clutch um, action. Because uh, obviously, what happens is it will just grip the basket and it won't fully disengage. Um, but there, although there are, there is some marring to the to the uh, to the basket itself. I'm not feeling any actual raised section, so uh, it all feels it all feels pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's all. Yeah, all feels all feels good. All feels good. Right then, what we need to do next is uh, using our brand new uh, brand new clutch plates. Is start reassembling the uh, reassembling the clutch assembly. Right then, we are uh, we are now ready to uh, reassemble the clutch. So. Obviously, we've got the old plates here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the new plate, discard the old plate, fit the steel. Um, starting off with the first friction plate. So, let's get her in. Like so. Discard that one. Get this steel. Give it a bit of a, a bit of an oil. Fitter. Right. What we need to do before we fit the next uh, friction plate is we need to fit these springs. Now, one of them's got a bevel, one of them hasn't. This is the spring seat, this is a spring, and it goes on. Spring seat, and then the bevel goes towards you. So, that way around. Then we discard the next friction disc. fit the next one and we keep doing that right up until we get to the last one so what I'll do I'll speed this bit up and I'll get I'll come back to you when I'm about to fit the last disc Okay then, very last disc, and as I mentioned before, this one, the manual calls for you to set it, uh, to offset it from the rest. So this one fits just like that. Okay, that is the entire clutch pack um, fitted in. What we're gonna do next is uh, refit the pressure plate. Okay, what we're going to do next is we are going to install the clutch pressure plate. What I'm going to do is give the push rod a liberal coating of oil and make sure that the bearing's got plenty of oil in it as well. Okay, right. On the uh, pressure plate, there's these little projections here. And as you can see here, there's a wasted portion on the teeth those projections go into there it will not go on in any other orientation as you can see it's not meeting the friction plate so what we need to do is get get them lined up just like so and it will sit in the right position now 
these springs I'm replacing with brand new ones. It's it's a good idea. At the end of the day, what you can do is get your uh, caliper out, measure the uh, free length of the spring, and um, if they're fine, you can reuse them. However, I've got a new set, so I'm going to use these if I can get into uh, the bag when I'm covered in oil. Come on, come apart. There we go. So let's get one of these on each. These are probably, as you can see, they are. You know, they're, they're slightly more. There's slightly more windings on these. These may give a different feel at the clutch lever. Um, but obviously, once you're used to it, you're used to it. You know, you know how your clutch feels. Uh, okay, so there we go. And what we'll do now is we will wind these in a bit at a time. If I can get her in, come on, in you go. Put a bit of pressure behind them to get them to meet the holes against the springs. Get them all in, get them all started. Okay, right, they're all in and they're all started, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just bang them down to touch, each one. Okay, now what I'll do, I'll get a torque wrench out and we'll nip them up. Right then, 11 newton meters is all it takes. The specification I've got out of the manual. And there we are, that's them all done. Right then. Next thing is to uh, get the, the uh, get the cover fitted using a brand new gasket which just blew across the garage. Here's the gasket. What I'm going to make sure I do first though is uh, clean off any of the old um, gasket sealant which is uh, um, around around the mating faces. As you can see, there's a bit here. Just got to make sure I get it all off um, prior to fitting the new gasket, and then uh, everything should be good. So I'll give this a good clean off, and then I'll bring you back in when uh, when I come to getting the gasket and the and the cover back on. Okay, so uh, brand new gasket, make sure we get the right way around, like so. What we'll do we get it on the dowels, just like that. 
and we've got our clutch cover. Right. In there we've got some needle roller bearings where the uh, clutch release clutch release arm lives. And what we need to do is we need to refit the spring and the washer. And then drop that down inside the cover. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to have a little bit of, we've got to turn this so it's like that in order to get it behind the release rod at the same time trying to get the cover on. It's a bit fiddly, but we'll, uh, we'll manage. get to a point where you'll basically just drop in in the right place and that is that okay then covering the right place what we'll do we'll start by getting the uh, the, the protector on because um, that requires uh, one, two, three, four of the bolts. And obviously this is where my uh, my little piece of card comes into play. And obviously the bracket for the clutch cable also needs to be aligned. mistake because what I've actually done is I've actually covered some of the other bolt holes so what I will do I will take this back off again because I made a childlike error So yeah, there you go, lesson learnt. Don't put the cover on first, otherwise you can't get access to the, all the other bolts. Nip up, right. Now, in fact, what I'm gonna do before I put that cover on, I'm just gonna check the operation of the clutch. By pulling the lever, I'm making sure that the pressure plate is moving by looking down the uh, oil hot, there you go. As you can see, in there, it is, at, it is operating as it should. So we're all good. So we know that the release arm is doing what it's done and it is engaged with the push rod. Okie dokie, right, let's get these ones on now.
Okay, right. What I'm going to do, go to the manual, check the torque specs, and uh, torque them all up. Okay then, so they're all uh, they're all torqued up. What I'm going to do, just have another quick double check, just to make sure, yeah, perfect, right. Okay, so, that's the clutch changed. The uh, clutch springs are also changed. The only thing I need to change now is a brand new filter, fit the filter, uh, and then get some oil in. Um, and then uh, that's pretty much the job done. Um, all we need to do then is uh, get her up to temperature and just give her, just make sure that um, it engages the gears and I'll take it for a little spin just up and down the road, make sure everything's good. But for now, what we'll do is uh, get the oil filter on and then uh, get some oil in her. Okay, the next task, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refit the sump bolt with a new uh, copper washer. Right, now this is tightened to 30 newton meters. There we go, we don't want to over tighten that because all we'll do is we'll strip out the threads and then it'd be good for nothing. Okay, so what I need to do next is uh, fit the filter, which I've left over the other side of the bike, so I'll just go and grab that. Okay, high flow oil filter, just like that. Take the uh, protective cover off, just give it a smear of oil, smear of oil around the seal, put the old filter to one side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to partially fill the filter with oil, clean oil, just partially fill it with oil. Not too much, otherwise all it'll do is it'll, it'll just drip out when we try and fit it. But it just gives the filter a head start when we first start the engine. And then all we do is offer it up to the oil filter housing and screw her in. Now these do need to be tight, obviously, they've got to form an oil tight seal, but I tend to like just doing them up as tight as I can physically get it with my hand and no tighter than that. You don't want to over tighten them because they're a bugger to get off of us. That is on good and tight. And that is as tight as I like to do them. So there you go, that's the so plug in, oil filter, refitted, all we've got to do now is whack some oil in. And then, uh, and then we can um, fire it up, test it for leaks. Um, one thing I will do before I fire it up though is make sure I uh, wipe off this uh, excess oil that's all over the exhaust system, otherwise it'll get awfully smoky in here. Okay, now the filter's in, what we'll do, we'll top up the oil, give it to me a big jug. We'll keep going till such time as the sight glass is uh, half full of cold, uh, half full of coolant, half full of oil instead. Not we don't want to call it in there. We'll go with oil. Uh, yeah, half full, and then uh, call that good. It'll take a little while to get it all in there. Just keep monitoring that sight glass. This is the beauty of using one of these jugs. It's, you can just tip it and forget and just keep watching the sight glass. Whereas with the uh, pour it straight out the bottle it comes in, it's a bit more clumsy and you end up spilling half of it. There we go. Nearly there. And I think we'll call that good. That took around about four litres. Put the cap back on there so it doesn't drip everywhere. Okay. 
Okay, make sure the seal is on the uh, filler cap. Screw it in. Obviously, it was really, really tight before, so what I'll do is I'll just give it a little tweak, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna over egg it. Wipe down where I've got all the greasy fingerprints. Right then. What I'm gonna do next, start the bike up, checking for any leaks. Obviously, give me given the exhaust a bit of a wipe you're never going to get it all off so there will be a bit of smoke come from it but what we're going to do start the uh start the bike up make sure there's no oil leaks from uh, the clutch cover uh in particular um obviously from the sump plug and from the oil filter and then what we'll do once we've done that is we will um run the bike through the gears on the stand just to make sure that um the clutch works and we can select all the gears so here we go let's uh let's fire her up Okay, so that's the clutch changed, cable is adjusted, and uh, it seems to disengage fine now. Um, so all I need to do is uh, drop it off the, uh... actually no I don't, I need to get the belly pan on, get the belly pan on, drop it off the stand and it's, uh, it's good to go. And uh, hopefully many more miles of, uh, many more miles of track use uh, ahead. Uh, hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this video, uh, hopefully it didn't, uh, didn't, you know, go on too long, I'll have a look at the editing, but uh, um, obviously it's a um, pretty straightforward task that anybody can do hope you enjoyed it please like subscribe uh, leave a comment in the uh, in the comment section and uh, I'll do what I can to get back to you hopefully um, you uh, you enjoyed it thank you very much for uh, stopping by bye bye now